to this tutorial uh, in which I will try to show you how to fly Concord X by Flight Sim Labs. Um, let's introduce myself. My name is Ramon Cutanda. I'm Spanish, Spaniard. So yes, sorry about that, because you will notice that my accent is somehow weird, strange, that I don't pronounce correctly, that I will make some grammar mistake. I maybe use the vocabulary in the wrong way, and I sometimes may just hang and stop to think how to say what I want to express. So. I hope even with those limitations you can find this tutorial useful. I feel a very passionate person about flying simulation in general and Concord in particular and that's why I want to share what I've known in Concord, uh, what, what my experience has been with Concord and, and I hope that those that are beginning or, or have just purchased the Concord can know how to, how to manage their five, the, your first flights. I'm a teacher in my real life. That obviously means that I'm not a qualified person, a uh, qualified aviation person. So my ex experience in, in real world aviation is very, very limited. So you shouldn't be trusting much of what I say. And because I want, I like to share everything that I learn. I've created, uh, I created uh, the website simulaciondevuelo.com, which is mainly aimed at Spanish-speaking people. And you won't be able to find many contents in English. But I've got, I've recently added uh, one section with English documents. And all, right now, at this very moment, 100% of those documents are aimed at um, at Concord. Uh, right now, apart from this tutorial, I've got an introduction to Concord and also two world tools that. That once you learn to fly Concord, and if you want to go out from the standard routes, then you will learn um, how to do it. Not not learn how to do it. You, you will be given with some routes that you can use to to go out from the from normal. Now, as I said before, uh, I'm not an aviation expert. I'm not a Concord expert. I'm just a regular user, which I really feel very enthusiastic and, and as I said, motivated for, for learning and sharing. But um, I'm nowhere qualified. So please take that into account. I have absolutely nothing to do with FlySim Labs. This is not any official video. Uh, it's not any official learning. I'm not a qualified person. Um, my only intention is to share what I know, to share what I've learned and what I think is useful. But please forgive if uh, anything on, or of what I say is not 100% accurate. What I can guarantee you though is that um, I do enjoy my flight very much from, from every single second on, and I'm sharing that experience which is very satisfactory for me. Well, um, saying that, uh, there are a couple of things that I would also like to mention before we start with the tutorial. First of all, that this tutorial is being recorded with this device. I think it's important to mention because this device inco incorporates its own hardware capturing and hardware compression. And that means that the performance of, of the simulator is not going to be degraded by the computer having to do two things at the same time to um, fly and record a video. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, that's what happens, for example, with uh, one very common application for recording uh, video games, which is Fraps, which is very good. but obviously it needs to steal some resources from the computer. About my computer, uh, it's a Mac Pro. Um, it's got um, a very particular graphic card, but it's some... It's, I, th I think it's not, it's not the perfect uh, computer for flying simulation, but as you will see, it performs pretty well. It's got six cores and a speed of 3.5 gigahertz. It has uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM of the speed 1866 and it includes two graphics cards uh, which are very very special because these cards are only available for the Mac and, uh, and you couldn't purchase this in a in a personal computer in a PC are pretty powerful each of them includes three gigabytes of, of DDR5 RAM but uh, they are p pretty unusual uh, pretty unusual graphic cards my system is a win Windows 10 Pro the the more details about my CPU, about my processor, and the graphics card, as I said, um, with three gigabytes, um, DDR5, and software. These are the version, the current version of my drivers, and I'm not using Crossfire because of limitation of AMD uh, of using two graphic cards at the same time with window mode uh, applications, uh, such as um, how I fly prepared. 
uh, but as, as far as I'm aware, even even uh, in, with with AM, AMD graphics card in SLI configuration uh, prepared as far as I know, I may be wrong about this. About this, uh, the performance is not very much affected by using two graphics cards at the same time. Um, I think it's also important to notice which add-ons, which extras I'm flying. I'm using I'm using uh, several by by Orbx, several by Orbx simulation system. Uh, one of them is the FTX Global Base, FTX Global Vector, the Open Land class for Europe and Alaska and Canada. I am also using the FTX uh, FTX trees in HD. I'm also using uh, Rex Texture Direct 4, including soft clouds. I'm also using AfterSky Next, the version AfterSky Next, uh, with, with the, the exact build is 5868. Uh, I'm also using for departure the Aerosoft London Heathrow Extended, and uh, for the arrival, I'm using the Kennedy, the John. John Fitzgerald Kennedy 2.0 by FS Dream Team. Get there's one more scenery which is the New York City X by Drewiki Design. Uh, I've always found very difficult to pronounce this Polish name, and I think we can start now our flight simulator. Now. Um, it's very important to know that I will be using the, the standard tutorial. If we go to all apps and we go to our Flight Sim Labs folder, there is a, a folder called Talks. And then in those Talks, we can find the flight plan routes. Uh, and I was going to talk about this later, but now that we've got it, we are going to make the London, uh, sorry, uh, British Airways, New York. We've got the Heathrow. Uh, Kennedy uh, route, which is here, and uh, it's important that we've got this information here uh, when when we are in flight. Uh, the moment may be confusing, but I will be talking about this later on. If we go back, then we've got the tutorial, which is the one we are going to be using. I'm not going to use this version in particular, but other one that I've modified, and I show you why. In uh, prepared, uh, even if prepared has improved a lot some of the um, problems in the memory handled by the default Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, it's recommendable, it's advisable to start the simulator loading the simplest, uh, the simplest aircraft, which is the Piper J3 Cub. If you load any other aircraft, especially if it is a complex aircraft, maybe Concorde itself, um, then when you load the scenery, uh, sometimes some gauges and some information is going to be loaded twice in memory. And that is going to cause a uh, lot of trouble and problems and different kind of problematic things. So my advice is always to start using the Piper J3 cab, to start the scenery with the Piper J3 cab, and only when everything is loaded, then switch to Concord. Uh, in the tutorial, uh, it's, it's been using the clear skies, and that means no weather at all, no winds, and standard temperatures. But for this flight, we'll be using after sky, and so that I can comment about the subtle and small differences between the, the default weather setting and whatever the weather I'm going to find today. Location, of course, is going to be the Heathrow Airport, Eco Golf Lima Lima. Uh, in a default scenery, it's gate 240, but in, in Aerosoft representation is gate 241. Um, we're going to start in the morning, anytime may be fine, and we just hit OK. Uh, but by the way, I remembered you that once you've got this scenery and this airplane loaded, you can save it and then you write whatever your name you want to, how, however you want to name it, and then make sure you click default to set that scenery as the default and to make sure that it's going to be loaded every single time. So we click, we hit in OK, uh, on OK and then we start. Now, let, talking about the tutorial, the first thing that I always like to do, not only with this tutorial, but also with any, almost any document, especially because my screen is pretty wide and I've got plenty of space, is I right click page, I click on page display tool, two page scrolling, 
and that way I, hang, I can read two pages at the same time. Now, um, even if I know Concord, and of course I'm making now a tutorial to try to tell you, uh, teach you how to fly, uh, uh, I always load the tutorial whenever I'm going to fly, and the reason is that um, I like to use the checklist in this tutorial because uh, that makes my check checklist task easier and quicker. So what I do is I go here to the bookmark, bookmarks and then hit on preliminary cockpit checklist. And that takes us to the very moment, the very point where we are going to start. Now what I've done in this PDF, if I've marked, I'm going to make sure that the volume uh, is not very high so that you can hear my voice even if the volume of the aircraft is lower than, than usual I'm going to make sure that you listen to me uh, properly now as you said I've highlighted some of the text and that is exactly all the things that um, after dozens of, of flight uh, I've, I've learned that these are the, the points in the tutorial that needs uh, my attention to mark if you want to do it is very easy the only thing you've got to do is select choose the select tool right click highlight text and there you are so you can if if you find it um, a nice thing to do if you like it you can do it in your own pdf uh, i'm going to delete this all right so let's load concord now we are at gate 241 at heathrow uh, piper j3 the cab ru engines running and we go to vehicles select vehicle And there it goes, an error with the graphics card. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to reload again. Sorry about this. See you in a moment. So there he goes in a second try. Almost there. All right, and there it goes. It finished loading, and you see the Concord systems are initializing. It needs sometimes to load. Then we've got a message saying the INS present position has been updated. Now, from this moment, I'm going to pause. Uh, at this very moment, what we should do is to load uh, panel state. Now, the recommendation panel state for this tutorial, uh, we need to go to add-ons, then we go to FSLab, FS Labs, sorry, then we go to Panel State, we hit on Load, and then we chose, choose any of these uh, flight states. Uh, there are some um, default panel states, uh, states, and we can also use uh, custom panel states. We can also save our own panel states. So we are going to start with the Concord X preliminary, and we're going to hit OK, and then Oh, as we can see, all the panels, all the system load in a pre-configured uh, position. I'm going to hit pause again, and we see that the airplane, the engine stop, the fuel amount changes, the, all the switches and, and knobs get into the different position. So our aircraft is ready to, uh, to start. So we're going to have a look at our tutorial and follow it by line by line. So the first thing we find, I usually have these two pages presentation, but now because you will likely want to read and see better, I'm going to switch to just one page. Uh, okay, so the first thing we need to do is to ground power. Uh, one of the characteristics of, of Concorde is that it needed a very thin design. It has to be as thin all the cabin, um, all the cabin has to be as thin as possible and also weight was a, a very important factor, a limiting factor and the designers tried to make Concorde as thin, as slim and as light as possible. So they decided not to include an APU or auxiliary power unit. So Concorde cannot start by itself. Uh, it Concord needs an auxiliary, an external auxiliary power unit, in order to to start. Now, Concord, um, apart from all the, apart from well, as you just see, uh, you can 
hide the joke or, or at least um, partially hide the joke so do ha we can have a better view of all the, the panel instruments. Uh, apart from, from the panel instrument which we are used uh, in any modern aircraft, if we have a look at the back then we find this huge panel uh, with dozens and tenths of knobs, uh, switch, switches and, and lots of things to do here. Now it would be very difficult and even dangerous to have to be looking forward and backward forwards and backwards all the time because actually the f we usually we will have a flight engineer here doing all these tasks. So what FS Labs um, has thought of is creating a menu which you can access by uh, pressing shift and number two and then in this 2D panel you can access to all of these panels we've just seen uh, sorry, this is shift one. Now shift two. All the panels we've seen at the back. In fact, um, this is just a visual representation. But the, these virtual panels do not work. For example, if you have a look here at the brakes temperature. Uh, sorry, sorry about this. Now, if you have a look at the brake temperature, it shows that it's almost a uh, 350 degrees. But actually we are stop and um, brakes are cold at zero degrees so this is only as I said a graphic representation to fill in the panels and to um, so that you can have something visual uh, I, once again the, the, the temperature the total outside temperature is shown at 17 degrees but if you click um, you can see that actually it's zero degrees because the, the all the electricity is gone it's not in the aircraft so you, most of the time you will forget about this view and you will just concentrate on the forwards view. If you click shift number two you can have access to any of these panels uh, but in the end uh, you will learn some other shortcuts and most of the times you will not be in switching number two and clicking the panel. Uh, most likely you will learn uh, some of the panels in a combination control shift uh, for example one of the most common is control shift number two you will use this panel several times during flight preparation and also in different flight pa phases in this case we need the electrical panel and the electrical panel is control shift number seven uh, of course the, in your first flight you will not be able to remember these uh, keyboard combinations and it's very likely that you win, won't be able even to remember which of these panels is which. So you need some time. Uh, I, I hate, I really hate pausing my flights. I like to do everything in real time. Uh, a pilot airborne don't have the luxury of pausing um, the flights. So I hate pausing the, the flights when I'm in my simulation at home, in my simulator. But um, uh, my recommendation is that you really should uh, assume that you are going to need to post your flight, your first flight with Concorde um, at least until you get to learn all these basic tricks. So, uh, we need some electricity in the aircraft but we don't have any APU so we need external ground power. Uh, you can see now that we've got some ground power available and the only thing we need to do is to close the circuit and then um, this electric, electric, uh, external uh, electrical current will get into Concord and then it will come to life. Now, before we do that, we should make sure that the, the current coming from the outside is an appropriate one. We check that in another electrical panel, which is Control Shift 8. Uh, we see that it's hidden behind this, so we need to close this panel or move it. And here we can check, uh, we can rotate and check the different current for DC, for the battery, for the different buses and the other battery. And on the second knot, knob from the um, alternative current, we can see now we've got some electrical ground power we can see all the settings about this electrical power. 
uh, we see that when we hit the ground power we get 107 volts and we get uh, the AC frequency of 797 and the DC voltmeter for, for the DC volts uh, this is internal so we should check that actually apart from having ground power available it's a suitable current so once we've got it as I said um, when we've got switches that can go up and down then left click always turns them up for example if we switch on the generators one click goes up right click goes down so for instance if I right click now it would go into the test position um, left up and right down so we need to close the circuit so we left click and as you can see Concord has come now to life now this uh, some say infernal gong is going to be sound, um, sounding non-stop until we cancel there are two ways of cancelling this gong one of them is click one by one all the master warnings the only warnings that causes this gong are the red ones which are considered to be master but if we want, if we want to silence them all and um, one for all we can just click on the uh, master warning cancel button this button cancels everything uh, there's a shortcut for this but I actually never use it uh, it should be somewhere it should be somewhere in the tutorial here control shift Z but um, I don't use control shift Z I always click here on this button there's another way to silence which is here in the master panel warning uh, this button over here can also cancel cancels also all the warnings so once we've got electrical current we follow the tutorial and why I'm skipping all this now um, as I was trying to explain before uh, the all this panel was handled by the virtual flight engineer and Flysim Blast has been so kind to include a virtual flight engineer that can um, uh, take him by the way I'm going to make sure sorry uh, this one I don't know why these protectors are are down it's the first time I see so I'm going to load again the panel state uh, panel state call preliminary there it goes uh, now because before the Concord didn't load correctly you remember maybe some something was going on about that these are the kind of things that usually happens when you don't start the, um, the you don't start Concord with the Piper J3 and use any other aircraft that you will find that sometimes panels don't behave uh, they are supposed to behave um, sorry I got ah, yes okay so why these things I haven't uh, haven't highlighted all these things because um, I think two pages will be even better even for the video because all these checklists are performed by F virtual flight engineer if you go to the add-ons menu FS labs options you find here that um, there are several options for the flight engineer one of them is the fuel management the other is the cabin pressurization and the third one is the engine rating management uh, the most complicated by far is the fuel management so if you feel comfortable over time you can disable the engine rating and also the pressurization cabin uh, the nice thing about this is that they are they take effect in real time there's no need to reboot or, or relaunch the, the simulator to make effect so if over the flight you feel confident enough and then you just want to check what happens if you think things manually you can uncheck and if you find that maybe you are not doing something wrong and you need some help then the only thing you have to do is to click on this and they will engage automatically once again now that we're having a look at the options uh, we can set several things about realism here which are self pretty self-explanatory so I'm not going to talk very much about this so I'm going to cancel once again we repeat we click on close uh, left click so that it goes up and it saves the previous state so 
there's no need to so we are going to control shift 8 and cancel <coughs> sorry <laughs> sorry for the sneeze all right so next step uh, as I said the equipment equipment vehicle and panel uh, that is one of the virtual flight engineer duties, so we don't need to do anything with that. Now, with the Drain Master heaters, um, these are the water used in the laboratories and other systems, I believe, and they need to be heated during flight. But during flight uh, cockpit um, flight preparation, we only need to turn them on if the temperature is below zero degrees. So let's check what the temperature is right now. Um, one, of, uh, one very important aspect for Concord um, is the external temperature, especially at uh, Mach 2.0 speeds. Um, the, the external uh, fuselage can get very, very hot, up to 127 degrees, and it's very important to have a look at it. So there are several thermometers uh, in, the, in the aircraft to check that the temperature, but first we need to turn the systems on. We need to turn the air data computers on. The air data computers, uh, we, if we click in the armrest, are here. We can use the virtual cockpit, but usually it's not very comfortable to be uh, turning your head all the time. So in the end, most of the times I just use the, the 2D panel, which is shift seven. So we click on air data computer one and air data computer two. Now the temperature is active. So if we have a look at it, we see there's a static temperature of plus 12 degrees. So no need to uh, switch on the drain the um, dream masters uh, okay now the air data computers are on now we need to um, align the INS now the INS are uh, these devices there are three in Concord one for the captain one for the flight uh, officer and then one extra backup here uh, for navigation we only use numbers one and two and number three only provides information but there is l they do little else to the to the actual navigation the first thing we need to do uh, concord the ins as in any other aircraft allows concord to know where it is at any given time and when it moves it register any kind of moon lateral vertical uh, rotation any kind of movement so that um, the aircraft is also self-aware of what it is in every moment but in order for that to work the first thing we need to do is to tell Concord where we are so we are going to um, get the INSs with shift 8 shift uh, 9 and then shift 7 and they are off to turn them on we need another panel which is this one over here we can an another way of getting these to the panels is just clicking it left clicking if you see for example the engine starting uh, one of the engines of the valves is opening the other is shut and the other is open and if you click you can very clearly see that they are all shut so as i was saying before this is just a, a visual representation now the um ins they are off number one number three and number two uh, there's a shortcut in numbers one and two and we can have access to this panel which physically is only located here this is the physical place where these um, panels are located but if we have a look at the at the um, forward panel we can see that these panels here they are not uh, in that is not the real position this is just for convenience but the truth is that is almost worthless because we can only, only control number one and number two so we can turn on standby number one we can turn on standby number two but for number three we need the 2d panel anyway so shift control shift one uh, so we need to access this panel even uh, if we want to use these other knobs so there it is number three now um, the current position 
it's recorded as the last position where Concord was parked uh, anywhere in the world. And obviously, uh, most of the times, there will be differences between where we last landed and we are right now. So if we have a look at the actual current position, it's very close, but not exactly the same. There are two ways of doing this. The, actually, there are three, I believe. One is completely automatic, yeah, which is control i and it will do everything that is needed automatically or we can do manually i'm going to show you the manual way uh, i can't remember as you can see there's nothing highlighted here because i know all this from memory and just concentrate on other things so let's go step by step the complete manual way to, of setting the the current position is uh, we are at 51 north, so we hit, well, first we rotate this knob to pause position, and then we click on north. As you can see, now this white light insert is highlighted, and then north uh, becomes zeros. So we only have to type this, uh, these uh, coordinates, so 51, 27, and then we've got to run out to the next number because it's six three and three is closer to zero then we are going to choose six if maybe it was 27.68 then we will um, we will type seven we always have to round up and then we click on insert so this coordinate is uh, accepted now we are going to the west and in the west we've got 26 7 because it's zero, uh, 0 degrees and uh, 27 and that's it so we click on insert and everything is recorded now we need to do the same for the other two uh, which is not difficult but tedious and sometimes prone to errors so there's a way of automatically doing this if we uh, use this crew uh, or, or I even in, in these 2D panels, but also here in, in, in the big panel with uh, the flight engineer. Um, there is a clue here that says left click immediate alignment and right click enter present position. So I'm going to enter present position and have a look that these two, number two and number three, are going to get the right position immediately. Uh, sorry. Now. If you see now all the three INSs and the positions has been updated, updated. But um, we don't only have to say where we are. Uh, there are more things that we have to do. The second thing is to make sure that there are no errors. When when the INS register a change in, I can't remember how many the, the, the exact distance, but certainly when you um, the last time that you use Concord, use it in one airport and then you load it in a complete different airport, the, the navigation system is going to notice a very huge change between the last register position and the current one. So it's very important that we click and hit on test to clear any of these errors. Now, to check the errors, we need to turn this knob to the last position, which is the side track or status. The desired track is going to show in the left panel the status is going to show in this panel and then we click in test and there is no error um, sometimes when you click on test you will see two three or more errors that 99% um, of the time they are because of the change in the current position so we check that there are no errors and now we can start the alignment process the alignment process um, there are Concord has um, some gyroscopes what the um, gyroscope do is detect any change in the position. So now uh, we've told the INS where we are, and now we need to stabilize the movement of the gyroscopes, and they need to be absolutely still so that the system can calibrate and, and, and set um, a neutral point. So this would be a normal um, gyroscope. This is the representation of how the gyroscope tell us um, all the movements, different movements in the aircraft. And this is one of the modern laser 
calibrated INSs. Now, the INS in Concord is not laser calibrated, but mechanical, and that is prone to errors that I will be talking about later on. So now the next process is to start the align, aligning process. So we left click and then right click to align, left click to pull the button and right click to align, left click and right click. The alignment process can be very lengthy, sometimes between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on, on, on the position on which airport we are located in. Uh, the number nine uh, tell us which is the precision of the alignment process. The minimum required for navigation is five. Uh, we are at nine, which is the the lowest level of um, the lowest level, and so it's very very long process. So what I usually do is left click and cheat a little bit and increase the alignment process. It says immediate, but as even if you want, uh, want to see, it's not immediate. It takes some time. It goes pretty far fast up to five, but then from five to one, which is the minimum, uh, no, zero. When, when the aircraft is static, it's zero. Uh, on, when flying, we can also alineate. Now you see it's ready nav. That means that the alignment is good enough to start navigating. Of course, if we start navigating now with um, precision level of five, it's going to get out of, off the limits very quickly. So it's not very sensible to to start flying with a uh, um, precision alineation level of five. It's far more better to wait until zero. So for the time being, and will the I INS, uh, the alignment process continue, we can go to our checklist. Now, so I think second thing is to turn on our transponder to set uh, our ATC um, squawk code and to test test that the TCA system is working properly. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry about this. We can see that the lineage. Oh, sorry. Alineation process is already four. We can turn this knob to check also that this one is also in four, and the same with this one. All right. Um, sorry, I forgot. The, ah, yes, the um, the transponder. So we click Shift Seven, and first thing we turn it off. We can use number one or two. Usually, number one is enough. And then we click in the setup button to test. As we can see, the test, the TCA system test itself. And we'll hear now a warning. TCA system test OK. That the system is OK. This is, by the way, the only digital instrument in Concord. And, and the only mod modification, the only important modification together with the um, Kevlar uh, protections for the tanks after the, the Paris accident. And this was compulsory to fly into American airspace first and then in European flight space. Uh, well, so that's a special. Now let's th think that the ATC give us a squawk of 2000, which is default. And let's continue with our checklist. Now, um, DV windows, we need to close, need, need to check that they are closed. We can open this window. As we can see, we left click and move the window and left click and right it. Uh, we can use the mouse wheel, as you can see, in order to check that this is completely closed. Uh, if we move the wheel down, down in, well, just try and make sure that the window is closed. If you don't, you will have pressurization problems once in flight. The flight control inverters. So we go here to this panel. We can close this one. There are two channels, blue and green. We will talk about these colors later. Uh, sorry, not this one, this one. And we'll turn them to blue. Changing this setting will set a master warning alarm uh, and the famous Kong. We, we can click um, Control uh, Shift Z. We can click here this button of cancel, or uh, in this situation, I just prefer to cancel. Next step is going to be uh, the anti stall systems, the radio INS switches to radio. When we are departing for our departure, uh, we can tell Concord to navigate using radio aids 
or the INS system. If we are using the INS, uh, Concord will fly to whichever coordinates we've programmed in the INS. Is. On the other hand, if we click on radio, then our horizontal um, instrument indicator is going to tell us uh, which um, radio navigation aid is tuned. So as we can see, we can tune any radio aid and uh, any VOR, for example, and we, it will uh, show us the way to that VOR. On the other hand, if we click on INS, it's going to load the, the INS system. We make sure for the London departure we are using the radio uh, mode. Uh, we can transfer uh, the instrument um, what we see um, as, as uh, in our horizontal instrument um, depending on what we've tuned in the capstan side on the flight officer side and we can change that with these buttons so for example right now uh, what I see is the the London VOR beacon and a, any set that we've uh, that we've got here on the captain side. Uh, on the other hand, this other beacon was uh, captain, and and then if we click here on on the dev, then we are going to see. Uh, we see radio now is treated to number two, and then what we see here are the controls of the flight officer of the flight officers. Um, controls here so that that way we can switch between one and the other the same with the INS and and other the the on other navigation uh, we have to make sure that for our first part of the flight everything is set to the cam captain sites on, on, on this part and to the flight officer side on this other control now uh, this is making sure everything is set second part the altimeters uh, let's go here and let's check what's the conditions for Heathrow Airport right now um, there's a QNH of 1016 so we set the altimeter 1016 okay next step um, in order to tell Concorde that we've made the departure we need to set the radio altimeter back to 20 uh, feet on our departure that way Concorde will know when we have actually uh, taken off now the, there's a small bug in the radio altimeter in the virtual cockpit and if we set it well first of all uh, if we try to use them the the mouse wheel it doesn't work here in the middle we need to put the hand just in the border and sometimes now as you can see the decision height is 50 feet but sometimes for example here on the left as you can see uh, it doesn't say exactly which is the decision height you need to put the hand here almost in the in the marks of the of the gauge in order to see the decision height so we set it to 20 next second part we need to make sure that um, all the radio aids are correctly tuned and that everything is set as per departure in this case the London VOR uh, which is 113 decimal 60 then the heading 271 heading 271 then the um, course 258 258 and that's on the captain side and then on the flight officer side 271 the same 282 271 28 272 correct 272 and 7000 feet as initial uh, so 282 sorry. Uh, 6000 feet initial altitude and captain VOR 
114.35. And then for the NDBs, we've got with shift number seven, sorry, shift number seven, uh, we need to tune um, 352. Three, well, the external, um, in the knob, the external part, we, we change the hundreds. Then a little bit more to the to the center, we change the, the tenths. Uh, I can't remember now. It's three five two. Three five. And then just in the middle, then we change the um, the unit. And that's it. Uh, okay, so let's continue. Now transponder we set it to the XPDR setting so we need xpdr we make to need to make sure that the brakes are set at the parking position and that we've got some parking pressure applied so if we have a look there are two ways to check this in the virtual cockpit we can see here that the prank parking brake lever is in the parking position which i can also see it with shift number six and we can also see that it is in the park, parking position. And then here we, we have a, a braking pressure of 1500 PSI and the emergency parking brake uh, uh, alarm um, display is, is on. Now we start switching on the navigation lights. Uh, shift number three. We can also do this in the virtual cockpit, but I don't really like this view and I simply find it quicker and more useful to learn ma uh, shift number three and set the navigational lights. Next step is the throttle master. Um, Concorde was the first aircraft to include um, automatic computer control uh, throttles. Uh, now we are very used to that, especially in, in, in aircraft such, such as the Airbus, Airbus. Uh, that when we move the throttle lever, uh, we are not acting directly over the throttles, but we are just telling a computer what is our desired position for the throttle and then the computer translate that um, instruction to the engines and taking into account a very wide range of parameters. Uh, Concord was the first to include this characteristic and there are like two lanes or two different processors, two different computers to handle these uh, electronic throttle uh, decisions and these are the throttle master. There are two of them. One is called main, the other one is called alternate. Usually we are only going to use one of them and in case of troubles we will switch to the other to the alternate. And during the Concorde flight we will use either of one but I always like to start with the main. Uh, I don't know, mainly because that's the main. And then uh, after descent, after the deceleration, after Mach, uh, Mach, uh, Mach 1.0, then we have to switch to the other, in this case the alternate. So uh, I remember, left click goes up, right click goes down. So make sure we've got all the, the, these switches into the main position. Uh, next, <coughs> now Concord had or has three um, hydraulic systems. The, the main two are, uh, there is no uh, shortcut for this panel, so in this case we need to use shift number two to get to the flight engineer panels menu, and then we go to this one on the uh, top hand right corner. Uh, as we can see there are three um, hydraulic uh, systems, green and blue, are the main. Uh, blue controls mainly one um, a different set of systems and the green takes control of some others and the yellow is just a standby system, an emergency system. If any of the green or blue or even the two of them fail then the green uh, hydraulic system is going to take care. Now, um, so with this checking we are just going to check that the, the ground hydraulics are in the right position which is yellow yellow and they are turned off. 
this this is other panel that we cannot get directly there isn't any keyboard shortcut for it so we need to use shift number two and then go here to the brake panels and then we check is in yellow yellow and the pumps off and off now um, once again i'm skipping some parts because the flight engineer, the virtual flight engineer, is in charge of these settings. So, for example, we are not going to check the fuel heaters on the engine recirculation valves or the secondary air nodes, because all these are tasks uh, performed by the virtual flight engineer. Uh, usually, the first thing you do in, in any aircraft, either light, heavy or medium, is to switch on the batteries in order to start working in the aircraft. But uh, as you've just been able to check, we've been using ground power all the time and uh, we haven't actually ne needed the batteries up to this point. So we go to the battery settings, which is shift control, um, yeah, shift control number eight. And um, once again, we've got a three position switch. Uh, right click goes down. Uh, we need to go up one, one step, so left click once. And left left click I uh, sorry left click once so the battery isolation light goes off and we are ready to continue oops sorry now next step we need to check that the INS process is everything is ready now the INS is now uh, aligned that meaning that the uh, sorry Concord knows where we are and is aligned and is going to record to register every single um, step that uh, the, every single movement from now on and i'm thinking that this is going to be the last part of, of uh, the last section of this first part of the tutorial and then we are going to move to another video in order to not not to make them too long now um Concord, the, this SIVA INS system uh, has got a very, very important limitation. We can only, this, the, the memory is limited to only nine waypoints. That means that no matter how many waypoints our routes have, we can only use nine waypoints at a time. So if we go back now to this um, sheet we, we talked about, here we've got our route, our route. So we start in London, then we move to Woodley, after Woodley to Compton, after Compton to Malby, after Malby to Upgas, after Upgas to Merley, Merley Leslu, and so on and so forth. Here we've got all the coordinates. And well, the problem is that as we can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then after nine, we go back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we see that after nine, we go back to one and two. That means that we need to free memory and load um, <coughs> as route goes by. As you can see with these uh, black triangles, this marks the point where we need to load a different card. Um, we can see that in waypoint one, obviously, we need the first card. Then between point six, so, sorry, between point seven and eight, between these two waypoints, we need to load the card number 11. I, I'll talk about cards later. Then we keep on navigating, and then when we are between points 4 and 5, we need to load another card, in this case number 12. And then <clears throat> we continue, and in the very last step between Carm and the Kennedy Airport, we need to finally load the last one, which is number 14. How we load these uh, these cards um, included with the with the INS? They were included um, some the, some of these cards for the most common routes. Uh, in another tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how to create cards for any custom route. Now, if we go to our hand drive and go wherever we've got our uh, prepared installation. There is a, a folder, if you remember during the installation of Concord, um, you had to manually uh, install a SIVA. If you remember, you had to go here to FlySim Labs and then use the SIVA. I don't know if this actually, if this is the right pronunciation, sorry. I, in English, I would say, in Spanish, SIVA. Uh, in English, I guess it would be SIVA or SIVA, uh, I don't know, sorry. Well, you launch this SIVA installer 
and this is going to have here a folder where all the panels are installed and inside there is uh, one folder called a deu and inside this folder we've got plenty of files these files are actually text files so if we have a look we need to load the card number 10 so if we go here and load card number 10 if we tell our system to open with the notepad um, sorry this is not the standard notepad it's a modification called notepad 2 it's pretty old by now but I still like it very very much and it's freeware and well it's just that I like it uh, I just mentioned because you will notice there's something different with yours so you see it's a carousel um, for AC INS uh, the waypoints card uh, for use with flashing labs blah 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 now here we've got the coordinates and then this is a commentary telling how this point waypoint is named so we have, we need to load this information into the INS in order to do so uh, we've got if you remember here in this in this screw here we could left or right click to align now if we go to this screw on on this side it says root reader if we left click then we can load a new root uh, we've got the plus and minus symbols we can use the um, the mouse wheel which is faster if we we can go up or down and as you can see we can choose different file cards now we choose file card number 10 and just click on load it's going to read it's going to take a little bit of time and after some seconds there it is it's completely loaded now we click again on the on the screw di disappear uh, did it really load we need to check we turn to waypoint and then here zero is always our current point zero is go always going to say where we are at this moment now we can click on the to the right or to the left of this number to increase or decrease the waypoint Waypoint number one, we've got these coordinates. Let's check and compare. Uh, sorry. <coughs> so let's compare, or even better, let's compare with the text. We, we can see better. <coughs> sorry about this. 51272, uh, 0000, 52.7. Uh, yes, this is correct. Let's go, for example, to number five and let's compare. Number five is 5125000, yeah, Merli. So as you see, it's always wise, it's always a good idea to check that we've got all the waypoints uh, that we are supposed to fly inside and uh, that the, the, we have loaded the right card and that we are actually flying to the places we want to. One of the limitations, um, one of the limitations, we can change it now. Of Concorde, um, well not specifically to Concorde, also to other aircraft using this navigation system, is that we have no uh, visual clue of where we are and we are going to. The only thing we know is uh, at which coordinate we are right now and to which coordinate we are, right, are flying to. So um, this uh, sheet is uh, actually very important to have it at hand to know everywhere every time where we are we are we are heading to and uh, what I also like to do is I use Flysync Commander to create uh, a copy of my route so that even if I don't like to use the GPS mode once again Concord uh, pilot didn't have this kind of GPS helps they only have to navigate with maps and uh, with this um, uh, loading or position or or root sheets and I only like to use this too so I don't like the GPS mode I don't like to see my aircraft where it is uh, instead I would like to know that I'm flying between let's imagine that right now in my route I'm between points 9 and 1 then I'm between Sierra Mike uh, 30 West and Sierra Mike 40 West Sierra Mike 30 and 40 and then checking the distance to the next waypoint and the time to the next point I can make a visual image in my head of where I am. Now, last one last thing before we finish. Um, we checked that the waypoints were correct, but if we have a look at here, and then we go to waypoint number five, uh-oh, there's a problem. 
Yes, we need to manually load these cards in all three uh, INSs. Now, there's another problem. Uh, here, this screw doesn't work. We cannot load the root in INS number three. The way to do this, there is a button here called Remote. If we click on Remote, and we load again our root, and then we click on Load, now it's going to load to in INS number two and in INS number three. As you see, number three is number five is loaded, and there we are. We've got exactly the same waypoints here than in here than in here. So we're ready to go. What we have to do now is to the very last step before we continue our checklist is to click in navigation mode then the green light goes off now this green light is going to go off and this green light is going to go off we are now ready to go so i will stop here this video and continue our tutorial in another video see you